So it's been about two weeks since I started testing this drone and I went between US and Japan to fly this guy. And so far, coming from the perspective of the custom built drone space, this thing, it just works together. With the goggles three, DJI's newest addition to the goggles lineup, the FPV controller three, which is the most akin to the FPV drone controllers we use on a regular basis, and the real deal banger for beginners and people who are just wanting to get into FPV without the huge learning curve of manual mode, the RC Motion 3 controller. I've put this thing into the hands of a couple people already who have never flown FPV before. And just within a couple of minutes of instruction, they're already up and flying in a way that would have taken me, I mean like a week or something to learn how to do in the actual manual mode. The fact that you just hit a gap on your first flight is freaking insane. You do not get this kind of simplicity when you are building and flying custom FPV drones. I think the draw of FPV is really how fantastic and out of life that these shots look. And a lot of the turnoffs is how much of a learning curve it is to be able to start flying in that way. But with these controllers, with this RC Motion 3, even people who've never flown before can now enjoy at least like 70% of what FPV has to offer, which is the soaring and the fast paced motion flying that you would want in your shots. Here's the thing I'm most excited about using this guy. With my main FPV drone setups like this Cinema, I am looking through the O3 air unit, which is pretty nice. It films in 4K, but you can tell that it's not actually as good as the GoPro. However, you don't know what you're actually getting from the GoPro because you're not looking through it. It's kind of like those old point and shoots where you'd have the lens and you'd have this little plastic thing in the corner and you're like, okay, I hope this is good. It's very similar to that. However, now with the Avata 2, they have equipped us with a one over 1.3 inch sensor, which is bigger than the O3 air units. This is the O4 air units that will hopefully come out in the future, which means not only is this thing lighter and has more battery time, flies like four times longer, you also are seeing exactly what you're getting out of picture, which is so, so clutch, especially for when you really want to get those precise movements and shots. One of the gripes I do have currently with the Avata 2 is they don't have 24 frames per second installed into this thing. It only goes down to 30, which is like social media frame rate. But if you want to go cinema mode and you want to film motion picture frame rate, that's 24. It doesn't have that yet, which is kind of strange, but I'm sure this can be fixed with an update. My current drones all use these LiPo batteries. They're super high output. However, they don't last very long. You're going to get like three to six minutes on these guys. Not long at all. And then you got this thing, which is like half the weight is a 4S 2150 milliamp hour battery that the Avata 2 uses and this thing will get you 23 plus minutes hovering. It'll get you like 10 maybe 12 minutes flying at PV mode which is already like three to four times longer than you would have gotten with a regular LiPo. Unfortunately if it comes to modding and improving the drone you can't really do that because DJI keeps everything DJI. However because they keep it like that everything that they build works really well in tandem. For my custom FPV drone builds, for example, it's a fixed camera. Well, technologically, there's no gimbal or motors that are controlling the camera from going up and down. And so really, you kind of have to fix it at one level and hope that that will do you good for the whole flight. But there are occasions where I would like to fly faster, which means I'd like to have a higher camera angle and not zero, but I can't do that mid-flight. I'd have to change it. And that really messes with the dynamic of what you're capturing. But with this thing, because DJI has built the gimbal into the drone. You can now adjust the tilt on the controller, which that's actually a huge step forward. Once again, with these custom built FPV drones, you are looking at pretty much fully manual mode. There's an angle mode. However, it's still not like altitude hold. You have to always have your hands on the sticks or else this thing is going to fly away. It's gonna turn over, it's gonna crash. But because DJI, once again, is DJI, They've built their really, really accurate altitude hold and position holding with GPS into these drones. So if you feel like you don't want to fly manual or you want to panic button and break, there are options and functions for that on the controller. So I don't have to always have my hands on the controller. In fact, there were moments where I was testing this drone out. If I wanted to adjust my goggles or, or like talk to someone, I didn't have to go all the way back home and land my drone, which is something I would have to do or else I'd run out of battery. I could just hit that button, boom. It goes into Mavic hold mode and just sitting there. That is so crazy to me that it can do that because I've never been able to do that with FPV. This thing is providing so much luxury for what it is. I actually don't know how much it costs. Let's take a look. <laughs> how much is the Avata 2? What? What the? Okay. So when people are asking me to get into FPV for filming and professional purposes, 
I always direct them to the digital setup, something that's a little bit more modern. I'll ask them to get an O3 air unit with a compatible controller, goggles, drone, battery, charger, all of this usually amalgamates to about $1,500. The Avata 2 Fly More combo with three batteries is $1,200. I thought it was going to be a lot more. I will say though, I don't think that comes with the FPV controller. So after you buy, once you buy the FPV Remote 3, it's going to total about $1,400. So it'll be about the same. However, you'll have at least both the RC Motion 3 and the FPV Remote 3 for when you want to switch from going beginner mode to just kind of being able to fly around for fun, let your friends fly to going manual mode where you can actually have a lot more control. You can do acro movements, you can split ass, you can dive. 1400 for the top of the line technology where I feel like this is actually going to become one of my main drones. That is not bad at all. If you do want to get into FPV on a lower budget, you can always just start with a really cheap remote, buy a simulator, practice it, buy a tiny whoop. You can go that route, a couple hundred dollars, you're good. However, if you want something that is good for learning, that is safe, has obstacle sensors built into it so you can fly it like a normal drone and then gradually work your way up, the Avata 2 might just be the perfect investment for you. I genuinely wish that this was around when I started, that way I didn't have to crash so many times. I will say though that because of the nature of FPV, part of the game is crashing. So please do still practice in a simulator. Please do push your limits and get DJI Refresh Care. So if you break this thing, you don't have to pay out your ass to get it fixed. Multiple drone companies have been sending me parts and honestly, they've been great. However, since the newbie drone cinema, I don't think I've received anything where I felt like, wow, this is like going to be a permanent addition to my arsenal until this thing, I know it doesn't do everything. However, just because of how smart and how all in one encompassing this package is, I see myself using it a lot more. So expect videos with more honest reviews about these continuing forward. Let me know your thoughts on the Avata 2, if you think you're gonna get it, if you have any questions about it. Happy flying, I'll see you soon. Peace.